80% of falls in the home occur in the bathroom. Don't put yourself or a loved one at risk. There's a safe bathing system for everyone's budget. Enjoy a bathing experience that combines safety, comfort, and excellence. If assisted living is not for you, a BCI walk-in tub may well be the answer, giving you the safety and freedom to live independently. A BCI walk-in tub is the most affordable and comfortable walk-in tub in the market today. With our dual drain technology, your tub will drain quickly. And for those that still like the feature of a shower, our two-way bliss gives you both a handheld and overhead shower head. We offer the best financing in the industry with payments as low as $99 per month or no interest, no payments for 18 months with approved credit. For comfort, safety, price, and selection, it's got to be BCI Walk-In Tub. Be one of the first 50 callers and save $1,500. Call 800-354-4377, 800-354-4377 for a free no-obligation in-home consultation. Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I'm Dave Weishadol, and as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishadol. Doug, I lost a baseball parlay by half a point last night. I am so ready for football. <laughs> uh, you know, you know it, oh, boy. I, 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 I wish I lost every game instead of a half a point. You know, I don't have anything to say about that because I did the same thing. I lost a, lost a parlay by a half a point as well. Oh, okay. So, uh, All right. Well. I, I feel your pain. And yep. uh, again, football's, football's here. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's nice to see. I'm I'm actually enjoying. I have watching. not bet on a preseason game yet. I know people who do I've, that. I've done and that's futures. fine, but yeah. I have to admit, I'm I've going bro- through them now. My futures. Now, I broke so. down and already did a first week parlay. Oh, all right. Okay. And I feel even better about one of the games I picked in the parlay, which is the Jets uh, Ravens game. Oh, okay. Uh, Jets were like uh, the underdog by I think it was six and a half. All right, or five and a half, something like that. I can't remember what it was right now, but. If it was five and a half, I still feel good about it now that Flacco is starting. Okay, yeah, all right. I have to admit. By, by the way, the Jets dodged a bullet. Boy, I, I was watching that preseason game. He didn't even, uh, what, what was that look for? I'm just fixing the uh, settings here on the board. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, did I uh, touch a nerve with the Jets? You, you had no, this, no, as a matter of fact. You had this look of pain on your uh, face whenever I uh, brought up the Jets. No, no, the injury. I, I, I have a look of pain so, because the board here is giving me fits this morning. Ah, but other than okay. that, uh, no, I, I'm I'm very happy to see Flacco starting to be. Honest yeah, but with you. but but back to uh, Zach Wilson. I'm I mean, not, he, I'm, not, I'm just I'm uh, not I'm not. I, but I saw that Wilson happen, right and I felt bad for every Jets fan in the world. Boy, they the, the snake bit team. But but some good news. I uh, only out two to four weeks. I know he had a well, knee surgery, a it's, torn meniscus. It's two to like four that. weeks recovery time. Yeah, uh, they're they're going to be very careful. And quite honestly, if they're winning with Flacco, stay with them. Yeah, I, yeah. I, why not? I if am. They, I am not. Hey, if you're a Jets fan and you're comfortable with Flacco, that, that's great. That's I have great, to admit, so. I am not sold on Zach Wilson yet. I, I really am not. I, I, I have I, to I tell just, you when I when I saw I I know you bet a future on the Jets and I I think it was over five and a half wins. I'm still I'm still confident We're, in that one. You're still confident in that yes. one. Okay, yes, all right. I'm still That's confident. Good. In five I, I and a half. I was thinking about that. I didn't pull the trigger, and uh, when uh, Wilson went down, I was uh, kind of relieved that I didn't. But you know. I don't know. All reports coming out of Jets camp was that Flacco was out playing Wilson anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw the preseason stuff where the first game with the Eagles, when Flacco came in, mm-hmm. that that offense looked like 
they they were very competent. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're still learning. You're seeing Zach Wilson learning how to play in the NFL. At some point, it's got to click, and I think maybe you're looking at this year and next year. Yeah. If if he actually doesn't make that leap this year, you got to start looking at another yeah. quarterback. I think if he doesn't make that leap this year and they have another bad year after next year, you might be looking at a new GM. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I'm excited about this NFL season. I know, I know there's a, a lot of quarterbacks with new teams in Denver and Indianapolis. I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I think Indianapolis is going to have a very good team this year, and uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about everything the NFL. I, I'm also still confident. Mid, my, Mid-August, I'm always excited about I, the I NFL. Did, I did a Raiders, Raiders future, too. Oh, okay. I did nine and a half wins over. That's a tough division they're in right now. I think I uh, think they may be the best team right I, now. I think uh, uh, I think I, Kansas City took a step back, losing. I, uh, I'm actually fading the Kansas City Chiefs yes. this year. I know I'm, I'm a big fan of Andy Reid. He does amazing things within his division, but my goodness, uh, loss of a little bit of talent from uh, Hill and um, also the schedule for the yes. Chiefs. Did you see that? That's that's devastating. If, I the, think. if the Chiefs have another, if the Chiefs have another start like they did last year, yeah. they're not going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think the Raiders got better. The Broncos, great defense last year. That offense automatically got better because of uh, Russell Wilson. Yeah, much better quarterback. And so. us, and you know, and San Diego is they're going to be a perennial playoff team anyway. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I still think the Raiders over nine and a half is a good bet for it, me. Interesting. Well, we got a great show coming up. We got a beat in the house, and I'm talking with Don Emmons. About Ohio sports betting, Don writes for Better Collective, OhioBets.com, SportsHandle.com. I think he's on USBets.com as well. And he covers the Ohio sports betting scene, which I think is going to be amazing. And that all starts January 1st. And uh, Don's going to give us the lowdown and what's going on in the Buckeye State. Boy, it's going to start January 1st. Everything is. Oh, it's going to be. A, what a great New Year's in Ohio. Yes. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. Well, today's exit one, we're going to continue that NFL discussion we oh, just okay. uh, started. Oh, okay. It's led right into it, huh? It was a good segue okay. into it. So, All right, uh, good. I don't know if you intended to do that, but you directed yes, it I in did. the right I, direction. I'm, I'm brilliant at yes, that. Yes, exactly. Uh, but we're going to be talking uh, I, over over the last week or so, uh, the discussion f- uh, in the sports betting industry, and this all started because of an article David Purdom wrote for ESPN yes, yes. on player props and how big an industry those have been that's becoming. going to be huge going well to be they're huge. already huge they're uh, well they, they huge. are huge but i think they're even going to be bigger this year oh yeah no i from what i was reading and it was if if anyone hasn't seen it yet or read it yet that article is amazing in terms of is that the in depth. the chalk talk? it's in the chalk talk that's section it, yeah. okay but uh it, he went through all the different types of uh information regarding how player props have developed and they've become a big big uh, I guess weapon in the sports book arsenal. Okay, if you want to use it that way. In the sports book I, I don't know how else to phrase it, but it's, so. it's. But again, you know, there, there's a lot of interesting ideas in terms of player props. I mean, single game parlays. You know, you have the the game props. You know, the yeah. totals, sure. the individual sure. quarter things. But uh, single game parlays are huge with player props. Yeah, and we're yeah. starting to see more and more sports book focus on offering more and more uh, player prop options. Matter of fact, in the article, uh, uh, Perda mentioned uh, points bet. And I think this is a very interesting idea by points bet. Points bet's going to be updating odds on player statistics during the live games. That's so great. They're going to be offering more and more in-game player props Yeah, this yeah. NFL season. Which is great. Uh, Huddle Gaming um, the, that's the company that's, uh, what used to be deck prism sports, mm-hmm. uh, Ed Miller and Matthew David. Yeah. Uh, they plan on their goal is to have their clients receive about a hundred player props for each NFL game. Wow. That's great. I mean, for that's per game. 
Yeah. That's that's a huge amount of player props. I'd be very curious how this affects the actual broadcast. You know, over the years we've seen uh, BetCast yes. where they do a lot of statistics within the game itself. Yes. And I'm very curious to see if things like this, the, the explosion of player props and single game parlays, I, w- I wonder if the media companies are going to start saying, let's put some more of that information during our broadcast. But, well, Because uh, the- BetCast are a lot of fun. I, I, are fun I, to I love watch. watching yes. it, especially if you have money on the game, or if you're a fantasy player. Yes. I mean, it, this not only sports betting, but fantasy sports. I was surprised at Camby. Camby, in one of their earnings calls, mentioned what their uh, most popular prop was. Oh, okay. player prop was. All right. And I was surprised at this, and I don't know if you are, but uh, it was anytime touchdown score. That's a big one, you know. I I know I know that's uh, that one. I, I know a lot of people who do the anytime touchdown score. It's a little tougher to predict the first touchdown score, yes. so that's why the odds are so much. But that that's always kind of a safe, safer bet than the uh, but first can, time touchdown. But for can be anytime touchdown score lead and handle of okay. all player props. Wow. Okay. And uh, they mentioned, you know, they they. You know, the one thing they always try and do is looking down through the uh, player list who's playing in the game, mm-hmm. um, like the third string tight end. Okay. Like, you All know, right. yeah. they offer like huge odds for those, like mm-hmm. 100 to 1, 200 to 1 on a third string tight end score. Yeah, you hit on that. That, that makes your weekend. Yes. Boy. Yes. That could make your entire season, depending <laughs> yeah, on how much right? you put yeah. on it. Yeah. But so. yeah, player props are becoming more and more popular. They're, they're becoming more of the singing parlays. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how, when we talked last week about DraftKings introducing the parlaying parlays. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be interesting to see how much more player props are being used for single game parlays. There's always one cool thing that everyone focuses on at the beginning of every football season. I guess last year it was same game parlays. Now I guess it's player props. And I'm, I'm very curious to see how, where we go from here. Yep, and even Fandel said their their biggest handle wise player prop was sure. anytime touchdown score yeah. because that's I think that may be the most unpredictable prop. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, like I said, the first time touchdown person. It, that's I think for me that's the most. Well, and I'm, I'm I have I have never won on a first time touchdown. That may be the toughest prop to hit. Yeah, but yeah. I think the most hardest one to read is that anytime touchdown sure, score because. Sure. Like I said, third string tight end. What if it's the field goal kicker who catches a pass and scores a touchdown? Yeah, oh yeah, well. You know, you can have any kind of thing, but I think it's going to be fun to watch. As these companies develop more and more offerings in the player prop section, that is going to make betting on these games a lot more interesting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Exit 2. This week's eSports exit. We're going to be talking about some betting developments for esports. Okay. And I'm not talking betting in matches. I'm talking betting as in betting <laughs> on the players okay. and also yeah. the games and the yeah. matches. And uh, one of the aspects of esports betting that a lot of people don't look at too often is not just creating new betting options, mm-hmm. but for companies to strengthen the betting options they already offer. Okay. And we're seeing a lot more companies focusing on what they already have and just making it a better product okay. overall. Uh, for instance, we have Better, B-E-T-E-R. Uh, their eSports iframe solution was just introduced recently. I have no idea what that means. It's a widget, sort of. Oh, okay. Inside their, their sports book offering for eSports. All right. And what they have been doing is they have developed the iframing solution to be more personalized for the better. Oh, okay. So basically you see more of what you want to see. Good. It also makes it easier to use, makes it more uh, eSports centric than just being a little section somewhere. Okay, good. Uh, It helps the the customer better bet. Put it that way. GG Bet, GG Dot Bet launched a new personalized feed, which creates personalized lists of match selections and bet types, sort of similar to that iframing. See, but... I, I like that because one of the big things, sports betting, is you have to search around for stuff yes. that you're, you yes. want. I mean, if if these companies are putting it out right in front of you, they know what you're looking for, and yes. it'll, it'll make it a little easier because that's, that's the 
thing I spend the most time on, looking yes. around for the bets that I want to do. You know. Well, when you when you're dealing with the esports industry, there's so much going on. Sure, sure. And any kind of customization in terms of whether it's a data feed or match feed or even a player feed. Yeah. You know, that makes it that much easier for a customer to bet on, or at least to find a match to bet on, then make the bet, mm-hmm. and also bring in more money for the sports book. Okay, there's so much stuff to bet on, and you, and there's certain things that you, a, a better tends to look at, yes. and it's great that they have this all-in-one space. So uh, React Gaming is another group that yeah. uh, took a look at what they are already offering, and they made it better. They actually increased the access to League of Legends API. Okay. Which is basically their data feed. All right. For just League of Legends. Good. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's not a brand new tournament uh, scene, but it's it's one of the best ones out there. Yeah. And it's a lot of the things that make the business more smoothly, move more smoothly yeah. towards better profitability, too. And esports betting is still in its infancy, no matter where you see all these different deals, it's still in its, I gotta its, you, its beginnings. That's a huge thing for me. I mean, I when I want to place a bet, I want something in front of me that's easy yes. to read. I, I'm not going to name names, but there are some sports books that looks like a computer screen from NASA, and it's just I don't need all that stuff. Just I need the stuff that I want to look for, and it's great that they're personalizing some of that stuff. Well, yeah, again, League of Legends is yeah. one big game. You have uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We have a group, SIS. They just launched a 24-7 product. It's just uh, Counter-Strike. Okay. Data. All right. That's Good. it. It's twenty four seven. Wow. Great. It's and it's a lot more a lot more innovative than actually trying to come up with some kind of new bet type. Good. And okay. I think this is a good step in the right direction for the esports betting industry. I know uh, regular sports betting companies are starting to look at that. I know uh, Bet Parks is going to be introducing something by Epoxy, which is another AI company, artificial intelligence, Good. where it can actually read what you're betting on. And create a uh, more personalized home screen. Yeah, for yeah. your bet betting types. Yeah, no, it's great. So, uh, yeah, again, betting developments are always good. The right types of betting developments are even better. Drizzly makes it easy to shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and liquor from wherever I am. I just open the app, find what I want, and it's at my door in under sixty minutes. Drizzly. Ding dong, Drizzly. Exit three. We're stepping outside the sports world for this one. This okay. Uh, usually we talk about some sort of sports or gambling-related NFT product or even some AI-related product. Okay. Here we're going to be talking about a integration of two products. We have Shopify doing a deal with a company called Single, which is a NFT company, an NFT company, I should okay. say, uh, on the Solana blockchain platform. <laughs> it's like you're almost talking a different language. Yeah, almost. I, but excuse it, me, what was that? When you're dealing with the metaverse, Web3. Oh, the metaverse, there he goes, that word again. There and Web3. Web3 yep. is another one. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, it's one of those things where a lot of the creative outlets for creating and minting NFTs, let me put it that way, I'll keep using the same yeah. terminology, minting an NFT is out of the reach of a lot of ordinary people. And the more and more companies that you see coming out creating NFTs, you know, you're still, some people are being left behind. And what this deal with Single and Spotify will do will allow the uh, wording they used in the uh, press releases will allow creatives, okay. the people making things, basically, All right. uh, to actually go through the company called Single and create an NFT, which will automatically be pushed onto Shopify where they, they can create merchandising based upon those NFTs. So basically anyone can create an yes. NFT if you know how to, and this yes. will allow you to get it right. to the marketplace a little quicker, exactly. a little better. All right. S- single will see, I used do. English describing that. How about that? Well, see, I'm, Minting the, I'm an engineer. Spotify, I'm an engineer, Shopify, so. Metaverse, NFT. Okay, you want the actual, okay. do you want the <laughs> actual uh, phrasing that they use for this? Okay. This is token-gated commerce. All right, all right, okay. Now we're getting the marketing people are getting crazy. Yes. Well, now. it's non fungible tokens. Yeah, okay. Token gated conf, uh, commerce. You need a different language to explain this. Yeah, stuff. you need a lexicon so, for yeah, that. Yeah, I guess there, so. there's another big word for you. Yeah. But again, this is going to be kind of interesting to see where they go with this because there's a lot of, uh, uh, 
you know, musicians, video creators, you know, all, all these influencers, if they want to do any of these types of things that are good. on their own. And this is a good way of actually creating an NFT based commerce system for some of these, um, people out there that don't have access to the funding to create the big time NFT products out there. Okay. And I'm wondering how soon before we start seeing, and I'm going to tie this back into our industry. How soon we start seeing gambling become part of something like this, where any kind of better can actually put up their their bet slip with an NFT and yeah. sell it. <laughs> oh, there is a what is that? There's prop? a lot of secondary. there's things you can sell oh, yeah, there's stuff uh, your for bet that, slip. Yeah, but nothing attached to an NFT. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. I'm wondering if they're going to. There's start a couple seeing of companies of where the, you can sell your bet slip. Now I wonder if you can sell it through an NFT and stuff like that, or that, if that's going that, to be that's created. The, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking in terms of anytime you see an advance in technology, NFT wise, mm -hmm. Web three, Metaverse, you're gonna you're gonna have to involve some sort of gambling aspect now. Yeah, sure. And uh, you know, it's one of those things where I just figured, you know, this is kind of an interesting idea where. It's almost a homemade NFT, if you want to look at it that way. Okay. And you're able to upload anything you want in terms of a music file, video file, audio, uh, any kind of, even a live stream, they're saying, you can do with this mm -hmm. with this type of technology with through single. So, again, more creativity for Web3 and the metaverse coming down the road. I want to see what the esports and the sports betting industry do, does with this. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be fun to watch that. So... Uh, NFTs on on Shopify now. Okay. Exit four. Last but not least, we're going to be uh, staying with the upcoming NFL season, and I want to thank Katie Kohler over at uh, Play Pennsylvania for this uh, this information. She did a really nice article, and I, I urge everyone to go read it. Uh, it's a great article. She went through some of the betting-themed options that are available in Lincoln Financial Field as in, well as Pennsylvania as well. Yeah, that's in Philadelphia. That's yes. where the Eagles play. The Eagles, yeah. Um, she mentioned the FanDuel Lounge. Oh, it every used, stadium has a uh, sports betting lounge. Well, now, this used they? to be the Fox Bet Lounge. Okay. Uh oh, uh, what happened with the Fox? They bet? are now the FanDuel Lounge. Okay, it's All a right. member-only lounge. All right. Um, 4,000 square foot space and production studio for 400 guests, two levels, TVs everywhere, wow. bar, uh, no betting kiosks, she mentioned. She pointed that out, and it was mm -hmm. kind of an interesting... If you have a cell phone, you have that's, a betting, you have a betting kiosk in your want. pocket. Yes. So. Uh, so, but again, it, you know, where, where the, the lounge is located, uh, according to Katie, you're able to, it's a better place to watch the Eagles players entering the stadium. Oh, okay. So all right, I'm trying some, to picture that. So. You know, you know where they're coming out the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I know, I know exactly where yeah. it is. So, and you know, it's it's a, it's open to the members, mm -hmm. starting three hours before kickoff. Okay, all the way through. How, one how hour do you become a member? Well, you have to pay a price for the FanDuel Lounge. Okay, uh, so you have to you have yes. to purchase a membership. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, when it was Fox Bet, it, it was you know I think the prices, and uh, I have to go back and check again, but there was a it was a good price tag. Okay. To become All a right. member of this. Well, I'm sure this is a pretty high price tag too. I mean, get, considering considering what's in the lounge. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And, and then they have this Unibet landing. Unibet landing. Well, remember okay. the Eagles last year? They did a deal with Unibet. Yeah, the I, Unibet's I, the official I'm, casino. I'm trying of, to picture the stadium and trying to remember the signs I've seen in the uh, past. So. Well, I, I thought it was kind of interesting the Unibet deal that they made. It's with Unibet New Jersey for the th Eagles themed games. Mm -hmm. Unibet Pennsylvania has a deal with the Steelers. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so. you know, keep, keep, take a look at those games. Those games are fun. To can I say live, something about live roulette? Yeah, can I say something about Unibet? That that's one of those sports books where I love the way they're laid out. It's yes. simple. You got the uh, the information right in front of you. They're one of the really well. Uh, Designed. Designed uh, websites. And uh, so I, I really like Unibet. You, are you saying it's aesthetically pleasing to you as well? I, I just, the information's right in front of me. There's no, uh, there are some, like I said, there are some sports books that looks like a computer screen of NASA. They have three <laughs> uh, rows of information and stuff going atop uh, uh, the, uh, top the, of the screen, and but Unibet is really laid out great. They have yep. the information in front of you. It's it's easy to read. I think what you're saying so, is it's sleek. Uh, 
it, 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 it it's user friendly. I would yes. I would call it. Okay, the information is right there. But so again, well well done, Unibet. But you have the Unibet landing, and yep. and anyone who's going to the Eagles games knows you know these things exist. But mm-hmm. outside of that, if you're visiting a visit, you're if you're a fan of the visiting team. Mm-hmm. And you get a chance to go to Lincoln Financial Field. Unibet Landing's there, twenty-one and over. You've got it's on the main concourse in the north end of the field. It's got a full bar, high top tables, nice. TVs, good, and live betting lines from Unibet being good. played there. Yeah, I like that. Yes. Uh, that opens three hours before kickoff and throughout the game. Uh, and uh, you know, you got the Eagle. If you're an Eagles fan and you love the online casino stuff, you got the live dealer blackjack. Uh, over on Unibet, New Jersey. Okay. I, unfortunately, you got to go from Pennsylvania to New Jersey to play this. <laughs> but okay. uh, but the uh, if you want to do online games that are branded for Eagles, you've got the Pennsylvania Lottery. Okay. All right. Uh, great. They've got Eagles and Steelers games. And what they're doing this year is they're going to be offering giveaways for tickets for the games for both uh, both teams. Uh, more money to play with. Both uh, teams. Uh, what do you mean? The Eagles and Steelers. E- okay, Eagles and Steelers. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, but remember, Steelers also became part of yes. the Bets yep. uh, network. They were partnered there last year. Uh, the Steelers have something called the tailgate zone. Okay. Uh, at the new, at the new, and I I always say this wrong, and I'm going to try and write, read it right. Acrashore Stadium. That's okay. who has the naming rights of Pittsburgh. All right. I don't know what I grew up. Is. It was Three River Stadium. I still call which it is, Three River which is, I, I love the name of it. So, but so. Uh, again, they got a tailgate zone that's sponsored by. Uh, by uh, Unibet, you've also got the uh, Steelers Live Dealer Casino games on Pennsylvania Unibet. So uh, there's a whole bunch of new gaming options for Pennsylvania, and this is nothing new. Yeah, and, and every, one more sta- thing, every state's got them. And every one state. more thing about uh, if you're going to an Eagles game and you want to gamble, right across the parking lot is Live Philly. Live, if you want to go to a real <laughs> casino. casual casino, have a, you have a burger. Yes. At, what's the what's the name of their bar in there? Sports and Social. Sports, a really good yes. burger. Well, that's, that's how I judge a, a retail sports book. How, how's their burger? Well, all, all so. the live casinos have the sports and social. That's that's the uh, brand by Cordish. Yeah, li- yeah. the live, uh, was it live? Um, live casino, casino in, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, live Philly. Philly. And also you got the live Maryland. Maryland too. as well. But sport and social is a chain owned by Cordish. It's great. They're yeah. actually, they got a lot of standalones throughout the country yeah. too, yeah. sport and social. But that's a great sports bar. Yeah, it was right there. I was sitting yeah. there. I, I was in the sports book. It's right next to the sports book. And you're, you're looking into the sports And book. don't forget Pennsylvania. You always have that Chickies and Pete's over in Malvern. Yeah, Malvern. That has yeah. a sports book in yeah. it. And that's attached to the that new Parks Mini Casino out okay. there too. Okay, so, all right. Uh, I, I haven't checked it out yet. A whole yet. bunch of gaming options you got coming for you for the NFL season, not just for sports books and online casinos, but the lotteries too. Okay. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with Turnpike Sports by calling or texting us at 609-512-5910. That's 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports is the show's handle on Facebook and Twitter. At Turnpike Sports Radio is our handle on Instagram. And as always, our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to the show via Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Radio.com mobile app, as well as uh, Stitcher and YouTube. You can also watch us on your smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Head on over to TurnpikeSports.net. You'll be able to watch our video channel there. Well, we got a great show coming up for you. Got a beat in the house segment. and uh, But right after this, I'm talking with Don Emmons from Better Collective, Ohio Bets and Sports Handle, and also USBets.com. Uh, he's going to go over what we can expect from the Ohio sports betting scene. It's going to be amazing when they open up in January 1st. And uh, Don's going to give us the lowdown on what we can expect from the Buckeye State. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. <laughs>
Yeah, you, come here. Haven't you heard? We don't need to hide anymore. Now, we can shop privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. Dave Weishaddle with you here. One of the big stories in the sports betting industry is what is going on in Ohio. They are set to launch their sports betting industry on January 1st, and I think it's going to be a huge market. And as always, when we want to find out the latest in the gambling world and sports betting world, we turn to our friends from Better Collective. And right now we have an incredibly talented writer who writes for OHBets.com, which covers the Ohio sports betting scene. For his first time on the show, we have Donald Emmons on the line. Don, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. Oh, welcome to the show, and it was great meeting you at SBC Summit North America in the Meadowlands a couple of weeks ago. And like I said, this is your first time on the show, and we always love having writers from Better Collective come on and giving us the uh, big gambling news of the day. But before we start, tell the audience a little something about yourself. How did you start writing for Better Collective and OHBets.com? I, I know you wrote for, I think, about all the other leagues in the world. Uh, well, I, you know, I was approached by a former colleague of mine at a, one of the newspapers I've worked for in Toledo Blade. Mm -hmm. And um, when Ohio passed the uh, sports building bill, uh, they, you know, Better Collective was looking for someone to, that was familiar with the, with the, with the state, mm -hmm. familiar with the scene. And I've lived in uh, Toledo, Ohio for uh, approximately 20 years. They reached out, and uh, you know that's the next thing was you know I was work I was working for Better Collective, writing for Ohio Bet. I got to ask you about Ohio. I, I'm really excited about this market opening up. I mean, it has a reported start date of January 1st, and right now, as we speak, what stage is Ohio in with regard to sports betting? I mean, are they formulating rules? Are they accepting applications? Are they handing out licenses right now? At what point is Ohio at with regard to sports betting? Okay, they've already uh, basically formed all the rules. All of the rules have not been approved yet. Okay. Uh, right now they are uh, accepting applications for sports betting licenses, and they are reviewing uh, these applications uh, and these applicants. And so that's, that's kind of where we're at at this point. But they're picking up steam. As you know, mm -hmm. uh, half, this, half the year is over. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, you, know, it's, it, you know, New Year's Day will be here before you know it. I think everyone's incredibly curious about what sports betting in Ohio will look like. What can we expect? I, I mean, it's both retail and online, but how many sports books can we expect in Ohio? Uh, roughly about 25. Wow. That's what we're looking at. Uh, so, 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 yeah, I mean, it's going to be busy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I mean, <laughs> we're in the Midwest, but it's going to look like the wild, wild west. <laughs> Well, let me ask you about the retail sports books first. I mean, in my home state of New Jersey, you either have to go to North Jersey or travel down to South Jersey to Atlantic City to go to a retail book. I, I know in Connecticut, they just recently launched sports betting, and they specifically said that people in their state will live no further than 30 minutes from a retail sports book. So that was a priority for Connecticut. What can we look forward to in Ohio? Will the retail sports books be spread out all over the state, or is it going to be in in a one area of the state, it, will it be relatively convenient for people of Ohio to get to a retail sports book? Oh, the retail sports books are going to be all over the state. I mean, Great. pretty much north, south, east, west. Uh, yeah. Every now, some areas will have uh, multiple sports books uh, just because of the population and that's how it's designed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll be able to get to a sports book uh, anywhere. 
in, inside the state of Ohio. Well, let me ask you about the online sports books right now. Um, what can we expect to see? Now, everyone sees the FanDuel and the DraftKings, and I know you wrote an article about Rust Street submitting an application in the state. Who should people expect to see? What operators do you expect to see online in Ohio when this launches? Well, well again, let's see. You know, thinking off the top of my head, you obviously uh, FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, points bet, Rush Street Interactive, um, pretty much all of the major players. The usual have suspects, huh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, you know, I, I'm always interested when a state launches sports betting where people will be allowed to bet. I mean, some states allow betting in stadiums and bars and restaurants. Can we expect to see something like that in Ohio? And what will that look like? One of the things off the top of my head, uh, right next door to us is Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and they have a restaurant called Chickies and Pete's. And when they said, yeah, we're going to allow sports betting, I thought they were just going to have kiosks, but they actually have people sitting in windows taking bets, which blew my mind. Will Ohio look like something like that? And where can people expect to place bets, like in stadiums or restaurants or bars? Okay, so it won't look exactly like that. I mean, you won't have uh, sports books in bars and <laughs> restaurants. You'll have kiosks. But as far as in stadiums, yeah, all of the uh, professional sports teams, it, it looks as if they're all going to have some kind of sports book inside the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you'll have it, uh, obviously, at the casino. Sure. Uh, but but then like, but but then you're going to have pretty much you're going to have kiosk at all sports bars, and I think I think there's been over a thousand applicants for kiosks as mm-hmm. far as restaurants go and sports bars. When so there won't be a place you. I mean, if you're looking to make a bed in Ohio, uh, you won't have to look far. <laughs> It sounds amazing. It sounds great. And any time a state starts sports betting, I, I always love to an, ask the one question. Can we expect to see either sports books or sports betting businesses that are unique to Ohio? I know you recently wrote about a business called Right Bet, which is based out of Dayton. Can we expect to see more Ohio sports betting businesses that are based specifically in the state of Ohio? That I, I'm not sure, but uh, based upon uh, the uh, proprietors for rights bet, I mean, if there are more people that is uh, uh, forward thinking like him, mm-hmm. then I would say yes. But I mean, he he seemed to come right out, and once it was passed, him and his group of business uh, buddies mm-hmm. decided how can we get into this. Um, so so I, I, it's still too early to tell. Every state in the U.S. has different rules and regulations that could vary drastically from state to state. And one example is collegiate sports. I mean, I'll use the example of my state. And in New Jersey, we're not allowed to bet on colleges or universities located within our state. And we're not allowed to bet on any collegiate activity located in our state. Mm -hmm. How about Ohio? I mean, look, you have the Ohio State. uh, Cincinnati is an amazing football team as well. Will people in Ohio be allowed to bet on collegiate sports when sports betting launches? The way the legislation was written up, yes. Now, we're still waiting to see if that particular law uh, will stand because there was some pushback, particularly from the Ohio State University, oh, really? okay. leading, yeah, leading the way in terms of other colleges in the state, saying, "Hey, limit limit this college betting to only football and basketball, and leave all the other sports out in terms of betting on sports." But I mean, but at the same time, there are no pushback. There's no pushback against betting on the Ohio State University. Mm-hmm. So, so if there's the rules written where anything goes. However, there has been some pushback about, like, let's put a limit on it. So I don't know yet because those things have not been uh, finalized. It hasn't been approved. Well, l- let me ask you about a uh, pro team that's uh, in your state. The Cincinnati Bengals partnered with Betfred and applied for a Type A sports betting license in the state. What can people expect from that deal? And do you know of any other sports teams that have made a deal or are working on a deal with a sports book operator at this time? 
Yes, and I'm, I'm you know, it's I'm I'm actually in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. So and, and it's early for me, <laughs> and so yes, yes, other other sports franchises have made deals, and for me to just uh, again, I I'd have to look back mm-hmm. on them, but yeah, the Browns have a deal. Oh, really? The okay. Cavaliers have a deal. Uh, the um, Cincinnati Bengals have a deal, and even the uh, soccer soccer franchises they have deals with with, with sports books. So no, they're, they're, like I said, it's once this happens, it's gonna be a madhouse. If you love sports betting, if you love the whole the whole involvement with it, uh, Ohio is at the way it's written now. I mean, again, like I said, things can change. The way it's written now, it's like wow, that's the place to go place to bet. Go in the state of the Buckeye State. Now, I, I got to ask you one thing about Ohio. I, I heard, uh, and I, I was shocked, and I'm glad you're coming on to uh, that I can ask about this. It, one thing that raised eyebrows of a lot of people in the sports betting industry is, is it true that a high school applied for a sports betting license? I mean, it, it, what can you tell us about that? And, and, it, and if they did apply for a sports betting license, what's the general feeling like in Ohio about that? Okay, I just wrote a story uh, in Ohio for Ohio Bet mm-hmm. on that particular school called Spire Institute. Wow, it's kind of a you know it's a it's a prep prep school at, like IMG Academy, and uh, it's it's east of Cleveland, about you know uh, 50, 50 miles. And yes, they applied for uh, <laughs> sports betting licenses, which is out. You know, I mean, sounds outrageous. Wow, yeah. Uh, but but the way but the way the uh, anyone pretty much can apply. I, I mean, I guess they so. they fit the bill that they can apply. Now, just because you apply, that's the other thing that the commission sure. makes note. Just because you apply, just because you put the money up for this, that doesn't mean you're going to get approved. But they did truly apply for a sports betting license. And how does that even sound for a high school? To, I mean. Uh, even get involved in the whole sports betting business. Uh, to me, it sounds pretty outrageous. Yeah, but yeah. that's what they did. What is their general plan? I mean, if by some reason their their application is allowed, did they give any indication of what their plans are moving no, forward with sports betting? They're not talking. Oh. They're not talking. I reached out uh, to several officials at the school okay. uh and they're they're you know they're not talking about it but i mean if you put up uh approximately one hundred and seventy thousand dollars in application fees wow. non-refundable oh. then i mean i mean that to me right there says you're serious about this otherwise you're just you know you've got <laughs> so much money to throw away then you know hey you can solve a lot of problems wow well, let me ask you about some other deals. I, I know uh, me living here in New Jersey, I get New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania television stations, and I know all the sports book have made a ton of deals with media outlets. Has that mm-hmm. started in Ohio? Are there any deals right now between sports book operators and media outlets in the state, or do you think that's going to come further down the line? I'm, I'm guessing that's going to come down the line because I have not heard of any kind of uh, relationship partnerships in that regard, and not, not yet. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you about the start date. Is that a firm date? You know, I, I always hear things about in the legislation, you know, they're, they're required to carry out surveys before anything launches. And I, th- I think Ohio still has a survey to carry out. But is January 1st a firm date or will anything push that back like surveys that they have to do or anything else they have to do with regard to the law? No, I don't see any issues in terms of being it pushed back. They, I mean, they've, I mean, basically, they've had a whole year to get this right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, all indications are they intend on having both mobile and retail up and ready uh, New Year's Day at the drop of the big ball in Times Square. At that point, you're going to be able to go on your phone or any of your mobile devices and go in there. And place a bet. You should be able to any as far as casinos, anybody with the sports book that will be open at that point. You should be able to go in there and place a bet for the for the for January one. <laughs> let let me ask you about January one. What do you think that launch will look like? I mean, on midnight on New Year's Eve. I mean, when the clock strikes twelve. Do you think that everything's going to launch? Is something's going to launch or? 
things going to launch later on the day, or will they launch some launch later on the week? I mean, is it just going to explode in sports betting in uh, in Ohio on January first at midnight? Brother, I'm already tired just trying to think about what I got to <laughs> do to cover that particular day. What what really, a big day, huh? The, the lead in. I'm sorry. It's going to be a big day for you. You're not. You're going to be I, constantly working. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be around the clock. I mean, even before New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, the days before, it's going to be like so much unlike my normal holiday season. It's going to be <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So yeah, I mean, it's you know, I think the the, the fortunate thing is for me at least, uh, New Year's Day is on a Sunday, so. You're, you're kind of limited to just the NFL in terms of as far as what, what you'll be able to bet on on a heavy, you know, on a heavy day. I mean, I think there may be some NBA going on, but really it's, it's going to be all about the NFL. That, and I, I was thinking Ohio State has to be in a bowl somewhere, so I, I wonder if it's going to be on January 1st. I, I mean, you're, you're going to break all records if, if well, that happens. Well, you know, the thing with the NCAA, they don't play bowl games on Sunday. So, oh, okay. So that, yeah, so, I didn't so even know it was a planning. Sunday. Wow. It's a Sunday. Yeah, New Year's Day is going to be a Sunday. Okay. So uh, there will be games played the day before, but you won't be able to bet on them. <laughs> now, I'm, you know, the commission talked yesterday at the uh, 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 monthly meetings how, okay, if there is a game that was played on December 31st and it ran past midnight, that maybe you'll be able to place, place a, a live bet on mm-hmm. that particular game. Oh, so if okay. the Buckeyes are playing December 31st and they're playing on the West Coast or something and it's a late game, maybe you'll still have a chance to bet on the Buckeyes uh, with your first uh, official Ohio sports bet. You know, I was telling people, oh, I'm talking to Don Emmons from uh, OhioBets.com, and everyone asked me to ask you this question. Will Ohio have the same registration rules as Nevada or like in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, where if you register for an online account in Ohio, do you have to finish your registration at a live casino or a live sports book like they do in Nevada where you're sitting right now? Or once you register online in Ohio for a sports book, you're ready to bet. Once you, it's, that's the way it's uh, written up. Once you register you're ready to bet. It's no, you have to check into a sports book. No, you'll be, you'll be able to bet as soon as you register in. So that's, again, they're making it really accessible Mm -hmm. to be involved in the sports betting business. Is there one retail or one online sports book that everyone thinks will dominate Ohio? I mean, is there one really in front of the news and everyone thinks that they will be the forerunner in Ohio? Or is, is it anyone's game right now? Uh, again, I don't hear as far as one particular sports book being the dominant one, but obviously you have to look at FanDuel and DraftKings. Mm-hmm being right there, being uh, major players right from the start. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you starting to see the advertising yet in Ohio? Or not is, yet. Not, not yet. yet. We have not seen it uh, because I live on the border of Michigan. I'm familiar with all the advertising because mm-hmm. of Detroit. And yeah. so I, I see a lot of advertising. But as far as focus on Ohio, that hasn't happened yet. Well, everyone's gearing up, and and you're at ground zero when it comes to Ohio sports betting. What do you think we can expect from Ohio sports betting? I mean, I think it's going to be huge. I mean, they got great pro and college football fans, great basketball fans, you're huge baseball fans, and I know the Columbus Blue Jackets just signed the best player in the NHL. It it seems like right. it has the makings of an incredible sports market. I I even said I think it might even be a top five sports betting market. What do you think we can expect from Ohio when they launch their sports betting industry? Uh, again, uh, the projections are it's going to be a top five market. I think so. It's yeah. hard for me to yeah, it's hard for me to believe anything but that based upon uh, Ohio has not been in in play as far as sports betting, but all of the neighboring states have been doing it already. So a lot of Ohioans have been making bets. They've just been crossing the border. 
Now, when it happens, when it's happening inside, I think those people are basically going to stay home. And, and so, yeah, I think it's going to blow up. Again, we're talking about a sports crazy state yeah, yeah. from high schools to pros. I mean, high schools to pros, even you have a high school trying to get in this business. So, yeah, it's going to be crazy. You know, what shocked me was the um, the Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, right across the street. They applied for mm-hmm. a sports betting license. It was Did anyone say anything about that? or was Because, look, living in New Jersey, I lived through that uh, court case where the NFL says, you know, the, the worst thing you could do ever in life is place a uh, bet on sports and now there's a possible sports betting license across the street from the sports betting hall of fame w- what has been the attitude toward that hey all gloves have been taken off <laughs> in terms of that i mean it's really from a professional sports standpoint uh you know that's over with so i mean again the uh, pro football hall of fame i mean it's when I first moved to Ohio, it was basically one small building and a high school stadium. That thing has grown, and now it's, 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 it's turned into a complex. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it only makes sense. They're going to have a sports book right there. I believe Rush Street Interactive yeah. is their yeah. partner. And uh, so, yeah, it's nothing, again, nothing surprising. The only surprising thing is that there's uh, one uh, race course that has – not applied for a sports betting license, and it is eligible. That's the only kind of weird thing that hasn't happened or that has happened where they have not, you know, gotten into the game. What is there a reason why they didn't apply for a sports betting license? Uh, they have not said, and uh, they're not talking about it, and maybe they're just looking at it, you know, uh, that's going to be in the winter time <laughs> when it opens up. No one's going to be at the race course. Yeah, I guess not. So what's the rush? That's my that's my theory. So I got to ask you: It's January first. Uh, sports betting is launched in Ohio. Have you planned out your first bet yet in Ohio? And and would, what will it be? Do you think? I have not planned it. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. But because it'll be like fifteen games, fifteen NFL games, I'm sure it'll be on the NFL. So, so I haven't I haven't even thought that far ahead. So, Don, we're running out of time, but can you give us a website where people can read your articles and give out your social media address so people can keep up with what you're doing? Okay, my uh, the, the website I write for is Ohio Bet. That's O H B E T S dot com. Also, write for Sports Handle, and you can reach out to me. If you go on to Ohio Best, you can reach out to me uh, at the end of the articles that I write. My email address is on there, which is uh, demons at better com. Donald Emmons from OhioBets.com and Better Collective, thanks so much for coming on and giving us an update about what's going on in Ohio. It's going to be a very interesting gaming and sports betting market. So please come back on and keep us updated about what's going on in Ohio. Thanks so much for your time. Well, thank you very much for having me on. Good talking to you. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. With Drizzly, I can chop a huge selection of beer, wine, and liquor. I just open the app, find what I want, and it's at my door in under 60 minutes. Drizzly also lets me shop from multiple stores in my area and compare prices on thousands of products. Ding dong, Drizzly. We'll get back to the show in a few moments, but I just wanted to take some time and tell everyone about Bean Genius, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country. They feature over 2,000 specialty coffee blends, all at your fingertips at BeanGenius.com. Here's how it works. Head on over to BeanGenius.com and take their palate profiler test to find out what coffee best fits your taste. Then select from a variety of subscription plans. Every subscription comes with free shipping and delivery can even be scheduled for once or twice each month. And based upon your review of each coffee blend you try, Bean Genius actually learns your individual taste preferences and then suggests future coffee blends for you. 
And now you can get 10% off your Bean Genius subscription when you use our promo code PIKE at checkout. Bean Genius offers a variety of subscription plans to suit any coffee lover's needs. Subscribe with Bean Genius today and start enjoying some of the best tasting coffee around. And save 10% off your coffee plan with promo code PIKE. People gotta win sometimes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm a giant colorful check to deposit. Bean the House is brought to you by BetMGM Casino. Play your favorite casino games at BetMGM Online Casino. Slots, table games, live dealer games, everything you love about Atlantic City and Vegas, all online at BetMGM. Don't wait. Join in the fun now. Go to BetMGM Casino, create an account using our promo code TURNPIKE, and become a verified player. New players get $25 free when signing up, plus a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code TURNPIKE at BetMGM.com for a 100% deposit match up to $1,000 plus $25 free. Grab a lion's share of the fun at BetMGM.com. Must be 21 years or older to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to this week's Beat in the House segment. I'm Doug Weishadow here with Dave Weishadow here, and we're going to be crisscrossing the country as we talk about the various casino jackpots, lottery jackpots. We got poker room jackpots, bad beats, pie gal poker, constant pie gal poker, by the way. Uh, but again, we've got a whole bunch of different jackpots every week to talk about all around the country. Please keep the press releases coming in. Info at turnpikesportsradio.com is the email address. And uh, as soon as we get these, you know, we actually put these on and we actually love doing this segment because yeah. I like not only learning about the games, but we're starting to learn about new casinos that I've never heard of before. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like I said, uh, some of the games, I when, when I go into a casino on the gaming floor, I can actually pick out now some of the games that we've talked about. So. Well, speaking of new casinos, we're going to start off with another new casino. A brand new casino? A new for, for us. us? New, oh, for new, us. For new for us. New for us. New for us. I should clarify that. When I say it's a new casino, okay. it's, we've, I've actually never heard of this before. I've actually never heard of the town, and I apologize to the residents of Thackerville, Oklahoma. Thackerville, Oklahoma. Okay. We're going to the Border Casino. Okay, is it on a border? It is on the Oklahoma-Texas border. Okay. All and right. as everyone knows, there are no casinos in Texas. I, I I wonder how many people in the casino right now as we speak are actually from Texas and not Oklahoma. So. I would probably say a lot of Pro them. Probably all of them. Yeah. Well, board, the Border Casino had a lucky player hit on a, and I'm going to get the name right because it's a new game for us too, um, Aristocrats Star Spangled Seven Super Hits slot game. Wow. Boy. Not only did he hit on the Star Spangled Seven Super Hits, they hit the Super Hits jackpot, which has all these different slot machines connected in the casino. Oh, so they're all tied together. It's a casino-wide okay. progressive. All right, okay. Uh, he, uh, the lucky player who uh, wished to remain anonymous, all right, hit for three hundred and sixty-one thousand wow. seven hundred and six dollars. Like I said, on the three real Star Spangled Seven Super Hits uh, slot game. All right. Um, Border Casino, I had to look this up. Yeah, I don't know. How close is it to the border? Is it like right there? It is off exit one. It's the first exit on I-35 oh, okay. past the Texas border. You're right out, right you off are the right border. There. You right are the border. right there. You are right there. Okay. So. I mean, you're, you're going to be tripping over armadillos as you get to this All place right. because it's, it's right there at exit one. And as a matter of fact, the games, as part of this super hits jackpot at the casino, and it's a long list. We have Bourbon Street, Cash Barn, Ca Crazy Cherry, Gems and Jewels, Hot Ruby, Hot Red Ruby, The King of Coin, Lucky Ducky, Mr. Moneybags, Real Fever, Smooth as Silk, and the winning one, Star Spangled Sevens. I've never heard of any of these. They are all part of this Super Hits jackpot okay. at the Border Casino. All right. And again, 
$361,706.82 okay. by All this right. lucky patron. Way to go. Leaving Oklahoma, we're going to Vegas. We have Paris, Las Vegas. We have another table game winner. Okay. Three-card poker. All right. Okay. Miguel T. They gave his last name, but... For the sake of this, Miguel T. Okay. Hit the mega jackpot of $245,678. Playing three-card poker, he had a royal flush. Wow. Okay. Uh, according to uh, the Caesars Entertainment spokesperson who re made, to release the, uh, did the release, uh, Miguel said that the, before he had started playing, the night before, okay. he had a premonition he would be lucky. Wow. All right. So I don't know if it was a dream or it was a feeling or if it was something else, but he had a premonition that he was going to hit it big. It's lucky he had the premonition that he was in Vegas, too. I mean, you have a premonition you're in <laughs> God knows where and there's no casinos around. So uh, good. He was in the right place, right time, and he had a premonition. My question is, would he have told anyone about this yeah, premonition yeah. if he didn't win? Yeah, right. So it's, I mean, if you had it's, that premonition, you're, you're in Utah. Yes. What are you going to do about it? Exactly, <laughs> Nothing, exactly. So. Lucky you had the premonition in Vegas. Leaving Las Vegas, we're going back across the country. We're going to Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay. Presque Isle Downs and Casino. All right. I don't think we've ever done Presque Isle. I don't know. I, I, I've talked about it somewhere, maybe in one of the news reports I've done in the past, but uh, no, I don't think we've ever talked about it on this segment. Well, a patron named Marlene won the Casino Super 6 Saturday drawing. What is that? Like a, Basically a lottery. It's like a 50-50 kind of thing? Yeah, or? kind of. Okay. She matched all six numbers all right. on the Super 6 Saturday all right. and won $172,800. Okay. Now, this is done every Saturday All right. at the casino. A set of six numbers are drawn each hour between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. And when the grand prize is hit and claimed, because I think, I guess they've had people not claim it, uh, okay. It resets to twelve thousand dollars. I don't know why they would actually put that in there if it's hit and claimed. All right. But so uh, I, I was going to say, is it usually that big? But uh, it, I it starts at twelve. I guess it's a progressive kind of thing. Exactly. Right? Okay. All it, right. I guess it builds every Saturday between three and eight. Now I, I guess you have to be on the premises for you yes. to claim that. Yes. Okay. And if it's not claimed or hit, I guess it so rolls over to the next week. It, right. They add twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred or twelve thousand? Says twelve hundred. Oh, okay. So maybe it's a oh, progressive 12, as oh it goes God. along. <laughs> wow. Yes. So this might have and, been and it jacked up to one hundred and seventy-two thousand. This might have been a big, big wow. uh, space between winners. Yeah. Okay. Or claimants, given the way, the way they have this phrased. Okay. You know, claimed or hit. Oh, so it resets to twelve thousand. It starts at twelve, and no one 12 claims grand. it. You put twelve. It, they, put they put twelve hundred. Okay. See, yes. that's where I was getting confused with the twelve thousand and twelve hundred. Well, twelve hundred, twelve thousand. Yeah, I, I guess they made it simple for them. Okay. So, right. multi, I guess it's a multiple of ten for that. I guess. But a congratulations to Marlene, hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred dollars. Going back out west, and I know I'm crisscrossing back and forth here, okay. but I'm going by the amounts people won this oh, week. Oh, okay. Uh, Thunder Valley Casino. We've had Thunder Valley yep. on several times. As a matter of fact, we've had Thunder Valley on for this very same progressive, the Thunder Strike Jackpot, $124,240. Uh, patron was playing the Buffalo Gold slot machine when the progressive hit. So that's the the machine with the big buffalo on it. That's the aristocrat line with the big buffalo. Okay, on it. Right. remember there's other buffalo games. Out yeah, there, so. I, there, there's so many buffalo the, games. The, the so. buffalo gold get the is, buffalo stuff, but. is one of the aristocrat line. All right. So, but again, Thunder Valley Casino. That's a Northern California casino over in Lincoln. All right. Uh, Thunder Valley Thunder Strike Jackpot. We've had that's now I think two weeks in a row we've had a Thunder Strike Jackpot story. Oh, okay. Uh, going back to Nevada, we're going to Summerlin, uh, the Rampart Casino. And I think we've had one or two stories from the ramp. Yeah, I remember before. that name. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have two in one day. Okay, all right, great. A, a, a local named Andrew, first name only, one hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred and seven dollars playing Pi Gal Poker Progressive. Boy, a lot of we seem to have a Pi Gal every week. Well, it's it's obviously a popular game. I, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but the Pi Gal Poker Progressive was hit when Andrew hit a seven card straight flush with a joker. Wow. Okay. I like the yeah, fact you, the Joker. Yeah, you can use the Joker in yes. Gal. So very, very interesting feature to it. Uh, but no word on whether he did a side bet. It looks like he just won the game straight out. Okay. On the same day, 
we have another local playing the Dragon Cash slot machine. All right. Won $55,472 uh, on a $5 bet. Wow, that's great. I love it when they include the bet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know one of your pet peeves is when they uh, give the how much they it's, won, it, but they it, don't know how much they bet. It so. is not a pet peeve, but it, it is slowly getting it, to that point. It's a bigger it's a bigger and better story when you find out they they, they don't bet a lot and they yes. win a lot. But so Or the guy sits there in one spin and he hits it. Yeah, or, or or you know, he's walking out with his last ten dollar bill and he decides to sit at a slot machine. That, th- those are always great stories. I always love the story where the guy has never played the game before. <laughs> yeah, right. And he hits within one or two hands. Yeah. So we've had one or two of those in the past. But uh congratulations to the two winners at Rampart. We are now going back across the country, and I'm getting tired going back and forth on all these trips myself, but we've got six jackpots of $100,000 or more in New Jersey to report on. Oh, okay. So I'll just sit here and shut up, and you can run through them. Well, this is a are, short are they, list. Now, this is a short list now, of 100000 Now, are they online? Are they re, uh, retail? We have or what a they total doing? of six. Okay. Four online, two okay. brick and mortar. Okay. All right. Or is it retail? I don't know what the I catchphrase of the day is. Brick and mortar. Or brick and mortar. An actual fine. building. Yes. So. July 30th, we have $250,000 on BorgataCasino.com playing NYX Gaming's Abra, Abracardabra. Abracardabra. Yes. Okay. Yes. The play on the exactly. Abracadabra name. Exactly. Okay. Uh, unless that's a misprint in the New Jersey Division <laughs> yeah. of Gaming Enforcement so uh, spreadsheet there. Might but, have a proofread. Yes. But it's Ab, Abracardabra. Okay. Uh, August 1st. August 1st, by the way, was a very, very busy day. I'm going to go through the uh, the, the jackpots of $100,000 or more won on that day. $400,000 on GoldenNuggetCasino.com, playing Every's Double Ruby. As a matter of fact, I think I just mentioned the Double Ruby. Oh, no, that was Hot Red Ruby back in Oklahoma from the first story. Uh, we have 251000 on BetfairCasino.com, playing Every's Double Jackpot. Okay. Big day for Every. Yeah. Uh, and finally, a hundred thousand dollars even on Borgata Casino playing Alchemy Bets, Borgata Slingo Triple Extreme. Okay. So it's uh, that that that's the Slingo game that was made for Borgata Casino. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I said, it was kind of a busy day. We had those three jackpots of a hundred thousand dollars or more. All told, we had another seven jackpots of fifty thousand dollars or more on that day. Wow. Okay. So that was a very busy day in New Jersey. What was going on on August 1st? I don't know, but a lot Why of was it, everyone online or something? Well, yeah. there was. I noticed a lot of the jackpots uh, under $100,000 and between fifty and $100,000, yeah. a lot of them are on the brick-and-mortar side. Okay. So, right. uh, But the big ones have been coming out lately on the online side, too. So uh, going over to August 5th, continuing with this, we have the first brick-and-mortar here. Okay. $117,339.05 at Borgata playing Aristocrats Dragon Cash slot. Okay. August 7th, our last one of the day in New Jersey, we have $118,612.94 at Golden Nugget. I don't think we've ever done a Golden Nugget brick and mortar jackpot. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I, it, it's, this is the first time I'm saying Golden Nugget brick and mortar here. Yeah. So, uh, playing another aristocrat game, the Lightning Link High Stakes. Okay. Lightning Link seems to be a popular game down yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Bally's has the Lightning Link Lounge. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. right there. So, so it's a, a lot of Lightning Link uh, machines mo- in A lot of the players, a lot of the casinos have Lightning Link everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they always pay out. Seminole Hard Rock released uh, their, um, did a press release regarding Passing the one billion dollar mark in jackpots awarded in two thousand twenty two. Wow, one billion dollars. This is Seminole Hard Just two thousand twenty two. This is one property, by the way. <laughs> this is the Seminole. We're in August. We're not even done with two thousand twenty two. They have a billion for already. one property. Yeah. Okay. This is Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood. All right. Just that property alone passed one billion dollars in jackpots this year. This year. Okay. Uh, the second consecutive year that the Hollywood property has reached that milestone. They did $2 billion in jackpots total in less than two years here. Wow. Okay. Um, according to the press release, the uh, Hollywood property has awarded more than 331,768 jackpots throughout the last uh, uh, 2022 this year. Okay. Uh, that's one jackpot every 62 seconds. Okay. 
Yeah. I love the way they break it down like that. Average jackpot size, $3,000. Kind of blows your mind when you break it down the like that. The 60-second yeah. thing is incredible. Yeah. Uh, average jackpot size, $3,000. And wild card members, that's their loyalty club. Okay. Uh, 90% of the jackpots. Great. Good. We're going to finish up in Canada. In Canada. All right. Lottery story. A lottery story from Canada. I the, thought it was going to be an online story. Everything's online. It is Canada. an online story. Oh, okay. All right. It See, is I an online it, story. I knew it was going to be an online. All right. British Columbia Lottery. Um, the uh, West Kelanoa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, from British Columbia. Uh, resident Jennifer C. All right. Uh, she won what is considered, and the BC Lottery has confirmed this, the largest jackpot one on an online lottery via subscription okay she's a subscriber to the lottery basically you can have a monthly payment and actually become a member of the oh, lottery all right you just don't that. you just don't go and buy some of these things you can actually be a member of the lottery okay. go to playnow.com she logged into her account uh the uh lottery subscription was for the lotto max game okay she won $31 million. Okay, wow. All the right. largest a prize ever awarded from a ticket purchased on playnow.com as wow. well. Wow, that's amazing. So, and and also playnow for a lot of the uh, sports bettors out there know that playnow also has a sports betting section. So uh, okay. the BC Lottery, it's the only legal online gambling site in the province. And again, Lotto Max is a nationwide lottery game and she won $31 million as a subscriber wow. to the online lottery there. So wow. congratulations, congratulations to Jennifer. Uh, but uh, I, we've seen Lotto Max before. As a matter of fact, we had a story not too long ago. It was a $35 million win, but it wasn't through the online side. Okay. Right. But this is the lar largest online win for uh, Play Now. Wow. So great. congratulations to all our winners this week. Uh, please keep the press releases coming in. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. We'll keep doing the segment. And uh, we just really like learning about not only the games, but also some of these casinos out there, too. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. Pike. <laughs>